We are marching to Zion. Come we that love the Lord and let our joy be known. Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord. And thus surround the throne. And thus surround the throne. We're marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful. Zion, we're marching of woe to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Let those refuse to sing who live for new God, but children of the heavenly King, but children of the heavenly king may speak the joys of all may speak the joys of all we're marching to Zion beautiful beautiful Zion we're marching up to Zion the beautiful city of God then let our songs of love and every tear be dry. We'll march through in man's ground. We'll march through in man's ground to fair. We're all high to fair. A world on high. We're marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful. Zion, we're marching to Zion, the beautiful city of God. There is a habitation. There is a habitation. First, second, and the third, and the third stanza. There is a habitation. All together, let us sing. There is a habitation built by the living God for all of every nation who seeks the great hope of oh, Zion, Zion, I long thy gate to see, O oh, Lord, Zion. Zion, where shall I dwell in thee? A city with foundation, firm as eternal throne. No wars or desolation shall ever move a storm. O oh, Zion, Zion, I long thy gate to say, O oh, Lord, O oh, Zion, Zion, where shall I dwell in thee? No night is there, no sorrow, no death, or no decay, no yet today, no morrow, but one eternal day. O oh, Zion, Zion, I love thy gate to see, O oh, Lord. O oh, Zion, Zion, where shall I dwell in thee? Amen. When all of God's singers get home, after which we will have scripture and prayer, when all of God's singers Get home. All three stanzas. What a song of delight in the city so bright with the rapture living ever fair dawn. How the ransom will sing happy songs to liberate when all I got singers home. When all I got singers home. When never a sorrow will come. Let me know, let me know, when all 
and the singers get home. As you sing it over, so the sun is a moon, till the fortress to the church to come. But a joy can compare with the glory of the when all the God singers get home. When all the God singers Oh, and the last hour will come. There'll be no play like home. When all the God singers get home, having overcome sin, hallelujah, amen. We'll be heard in the land of the fall. Every heart will be light, every face will be bright. When all the God singers get home, when all the God singers Oh, and never a sorrow will come. There'll be no play like wrong. When all the God singers get, come on, y'all, they're singing. When all the God singers, oh, and never a sorrow will come. There'll be no play like wrong. When all the God singers get home. Amen. Good morning. If you have your Bible, please turn with me to Genesis chapter 12. That's Genesis chapter 12. We're going to begin reading at verse 1. Genesis chapter 12, begin reading at verse 1. And the Bible reads, Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of the country, and from the kindred, and from thy father's house, and to a land that I have showed thee. And I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee, and make thy, na thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curses thee. And in thee shall be shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with, went with him. And Abram was seventy and five years old when he departed out of, the, of Haran. And Abram took Sarah, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the soul that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan, and to the land of Canaan they came. And Abram passed through the land into the place of Sishim, unto the plain of Morah. And the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said unto thee, To thy seed will I give thee this land. And there built he an altar of the Lord, who appeared unto him. And he removed from hence a, a mountain on the east Bethel and pitched his tent, having Bethel, having Bethel on the west and the higher on the east. And there he built an altar unto the land and called upon the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed, journeyed, going on still toward the south. I read for you Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 9. That's the verse of a song. There's all place be standing and be led in prayer by Brother Hall. Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus alone. Are you weary? Are you heavy hearted? Tell, tell. Are you grieving over George departed? Tell, just alone. Tell, tell. He is the friend that's for all. You have no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Do the tears flow down the cheeks of beating? Tell, tell. Have you seen that two men eyes are hidden? Tell. 
so long tell tell hey yes the friend that's when all you have no other such a friend a brother tell just so long south side will you bow and go with uh, our Father in prayer with me. Oh Lord our God, Father we come to you thanking you for another day. Thanking you for being here among the living. Help us Father to continue Father to look to you for everything we need in life. We ask you Father continue to bless us but the blessings you know we stand in need of. Bless Father, bless this congregation Bless each and every member that dwells here. Mm-hmm. Help us all to do things that are pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Help us, Father, to hold on to your unchanging hand. We ask you, please, Father, forgive us of our sins. Mm-hmm. We ask you to be with, our, be with the man that come, shortly come before us to break, the, break up to us the bread of life. Mm-hmm. Help him, Father, to remember the thing that he has studied so that he can bring them to you so even the youngest child will understand. And after his sermon, have somebody just say, come out and ask what we can do to be saved. Father, we ask you to continue to bless our our ministers, bless our elders and deacons, and continue to have mercy on this flock ship. Father, we have been through many trials this year. But, Father, we know that you brought us to it. You'll bring us through it. So continue to help us to to understand that you is all we need in this life to to walk this earth and to do the things that need to be done in order to make make our heaven our home. We love you and we thank you. And we ask you to continue to have mercy upon us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory to his name as we prepare for the Lord's Supper. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where from cleansing from sin I cried there to my heart was the blood a blood singing glory to his and everybody sing glory to his name precious name keep singing glory Little is lame Well, you know there To my heart was blood of I was singing glory to his name How to do that? <laughs> but again, we now come. We now come down to the part of the service, which is the Lord's Supper. We find an example that the Christians, the early Christians, took up the Lord's Supper upon the first day of the week in the Book of Acts. The Bible says, "Upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight." We also find an example in the Book of. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 and following, where the Bible reads, For I have received of the Lord, that, that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same amount also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it and remember to me. 
For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord death till he come. Let us pray. Father God, who art in heaven, this again we come. Thank you for, once again for this opportunity to be partakers of thy son's broken body and shedded blood. That our minds will have our Father reflect back on that old rugged cross, on how you suffered, how you were stabbed in the side, and blood came down for my sins and ours. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us now partake of the Lord's Supper together. Everyone had a chance to take up the Lord's Supper? Everyone still. Thank you. As Christians, we are commanded to give back a portion of the monetary blessings that God has so richly blessed us with. We have our first scripture reference found in the book of Acts chapter 20 and verse 7. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. We have further scripture reference found in 1 Corinthians Oh, sorry. <laughs> now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. For the scripture reference is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 8. But this I say, he was so sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which so bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according has his purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, having all sufficiency in all things that may abound to every good work. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to give. We pray for those that may not have been blessed with the opportunity to give at this time, but be better prepared the next time. We pray that we walk upright before you and uh, be faithful in our giving, that you pour our blessings that we don't have room enough to receive. We pray, Father, that all the money that has been taken up will be used for no other purpose, the uplifting and the furtherance of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus is coming soon will be our next song and then the song before the message everybody will be happy over there Jesus is coming soon and then everybody will be happy over there song of invitation yield not to temptation just now Jesus is coming soon all three stands Trouble sometimes are near, feeling me hard with fear, freedom we all hold dear. Now is a stay, humble your hearts to God, shake with the chest, seek the way, big rush from Christ is away. My Jesus is coming, so morning or night, or noon and many will be there. Do trumpets will sound, and all of the dead shall 
righteous made in the sky I'm going where no one dies here for what power love for so many go lose of their arms all go this God word is told evils abound when this has come to pass near with our aid at last it will come very fast trumpets will sound my Jesus is coming soon morning or night or new and many will be there do trumpets will sound and all of the dead shall righteous made in the sky and go where no one dies here for what bow trouble will soon be all oh, happy for it for more when we made all that show free from our care rising up in the sky telling this world how we within we fly glory to share my Jesus has come morning or night or new and many were made the two trumpets will sound and all of the dead righteous made in I'm going where no one nights ever will everybody will be happy over there I just want to give you some flowers. You all sound beautiful this morning. Singing with the spirit, singing with the understanding. Singing to encourage and admonish one another. Singing with grace in your heart and to the Lord. Everybody will be happy over there. First, second, and the last stanza. There's a happy land of promise over the great beyond where the saints on earth to the glory share where the souls of men shall to and live on forever everybody will be happy for there everybody will be happy will be happy will be happy my Lord and we will shout and sing, praise and sing, yeah, praise everybody, be happy for there. The ransom of ages will be singing around in the land where no one ever knows care. And the Christians of nations will join in the triumph. Everybody be happy over the whole. Don't you know now? Everybody will be happy. Will be happy, my Lord, over. And we will shout and sing his praise. Look to that everlasting place. Every happy for there. There will be the one who save us and who kept us by. And who brought us to the land so and fair. We will praise his name ever as we look upon. Everybody will be happy. Oh, and don't you know now? Everybody will be happy. Will be happy. My Lord, over. And sing his praise, Lord, to that 
the last place they've lived They will be happy for them We will nobody pray and no morning the land for no blood as there will be for us to bear. And all the people will be seen. Give glory, glory to the Lamb. Everybody will be, be over Don't you know now, everybody. It will be happy, it will be happy, my Lord, over. And we will shout and sing His praise, Lord, to that everlasting place, every It will be happy, over there. And everybody will be happy. And sing his prayer, Lord, to that everlasting place. Be, be over there. Now everybody will be happy over there. Over there, there will be happy over there. We will shout and sing His praises through the never-ending ages. Everybody will be happy over there. Amen. Let the church say amen again. Sounds like you're all ready to go over there. I hope you're not just showing lip service to it, but we are certainly making preparation to go over there. Jesus is going to prepare a place for us. And the promise is that he will come again and receive to himself those of us who have been found faithful so that we can live in the after a while with our God and with our Savior, Jesus Christ. We want to say that we appreciate those of you who are visiting with us this morning physically. We want you to know that you are not counted as a stranger. You are friends. We are just now meeting. And we want to assure you that a warm welcome awaits you here at the Southside Church of Christ. Good to have those who have joined us on, um, uh, not Facebook, but what is it? YouTube. There you go. Yeah, YouTube. There you go. We've been doing it so long ago. Because I'm old, I'm forgetting. Amen. We certainly appreciate you also for joining us. Uh, my sister-in-law, Thomasina Wilson, is usually on with uh, uh, my mother-in-law, Sister Pauline's mother. Uh, they tune in uh, every Sunday to be with us as well, and so we welcome them too. Happy Fourth. Hey, Amen. You all see me representing this morning? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm wearing my, my blue, white, and you know, red, yeah, I'm representing. I'm, I'm independent. July 4th. Certainly, we, we appreciate this great nation so much. And um, we certainly uh, love times like this when we can uh, celebrate together and have family. And it's good to have uh, our children, all of our children with us today. Um, Eric Jr. and Paige and Holly are here with us, and so we appreciate that God granted them the opportunity to be with us on, on today. Well, I don't want to seem as if I'm biased, but I did say last, uh, a few weeks ago, that um, because my birthday is in June, that's very special to me. But you know something, Brother Moore? I realize that those of you who were born in July, July is very special to you as well. And so with that, having said that, and we have one in my family that has a birthday in July, and um, uh, Brother 
Brother McQueen is looking at me like, yeah, you better recognize. <laughs> so, <laughs> but certainly we had some birthdays uh, on uh, a few days ago. We had Brother William Moore Jr. I'm not going to ask him to reveal his age, but uh, he celebrated on the first, and um, Brother Michael White also celebrated on the first. And then tomorrow, Lauren Scott will be celebrating on the fourth. And uh, we have some others coming, Julius Daniels on the 10th, Kendall Seward on the 11th, Shantina Johnson on the 11th, Tanisha Moore. Man, both of you all have birthdays. What's going on in that household? Hey, Amen. The first and the 15th. Hey, that's Bill paying time, right? <laughs> that ain't no celebration. The first, you know, the first and the 15th. <laughs> Amen. Sister Tanisha Moore on the 15th, and um, Greg Horton Sr., um, certainly he is in our prayers, but he celebrates on the 15th as well. Sister Donna Hall on the 17th, uh, Paige Dawkins, who's with us this morning on the 18th, and then Lisa, Lisa Morrison on the 19th. Yeah, all right, all right. And um, we have another, another July birthday, Brother Seward and the Seward family. We have Levante Sr. on the 20th, um, Brother Troy McQueen on the 22nd, Riley Wright on the 22nd, and Sister Doris Calloway on the 27th. We have a couple of anniversaries, um, Ricky and Janice Thomas on the 15th, and then Gregory and Georgia Horton on the 19th. We celebrate all those that have birthdays and have anniversaries in the month of July. And since it's so close to June, Brother Carter, I'll claim July as well. <laughs> Amen. 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 Let us not forget uh, those who are away with us. A number of people are traveling today, and let's keep them in our prayers. Let's, let's remember Sister McQueen, um, who traveled uh, to take her a granddaughter back to Virginia. I think they're going to meet halfway with the mom. So let's pray for her traveling grace. And also uh, for her son-in-law, Benny Morris, who's in the hospital. And so let's remember the McQueen family, the Morris family, in, in our prayers. I want to say, put in a little plug for the Southeastern Lectureship. Um, a lot of us in the Churches of Christ don't attend lectureships. Um, it's been a while since I've been to one, but I've been to several. But I want to encourage you, if you haven't already considered the Southeastern Lectureship, which is being housed here in the Azalea City, the week of October the 9th, to please register. We have some 27 members of Southside who are already registered. They were registered from um, before 2020. Of course, it had to be put on hold because of the pandemic. But now it's being housed um, this October the 22nd. You still have time for registration. Registration is not going to be done at the event. Registration, as Brother Siebert pointed out in um, announcements, previous announcements, is going to be online. And um, uh, um, Woodland Forest Church of Christ are the ones who are spearheading it. They're the lead congregation. But make no mistake about it, this lectureship is something that's being housed by the city of Valdosta. So it involves all of the churches in the Valdosta area. I'm a part of the uh, planning committee. And so it'll be good if Southside can really, really be strongly represented. Yeah. One thing about lectureships is that you may find people who may have some differences in some areas, yeah. and that's not a negative thing. I know a lot of times people, oh, they hold that position, or they, they, they hold that, this, this different position or whatever. It's good for us to be abreast with what's going on so that we can help one another, but also, Lectureship time is a time for growth, for individual growth as well as collective uh, growth in Christ Jesus. It's a time when we can make friends and 
become reacquainted with old friends we haven't seen in a long time. Young people, if you're looking for a marriage partner, the singles group that they have online is not the only way. You may find a dude or a young lady at the lectureship. And so let's, let's, let's look at supporting it. Let's look at um, I'm registering it and let's be strong in numbers. It'll do better for us as we grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you need any further information on it, if you're not sure about how to go about it, I'm going to put, um, I'm going to put the church secretary on. I'm going to expose her right now. But ask, ask, ask Sister Hoggett. She'll help you. Ask Sister Hoggett and she'll tell you what you need to do in order to, um, to get registered for, for the Southeastern Lectureship. I want to invite your attention to the scripture reading that was read by Brother Gray just a few minutes ago in Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. I see a number of people that are well, members of the church who are with us this morning. It is good to see Sister Joanne. Um, Fordham, she's the sister of uh, Sister Shirley Pierce and Sister Morrison there. So it's good to, good to see her today as well. In Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, reading from the, from the New King James Version, the Bible says, Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your kindred, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will bless you. Or rather, I, uh, I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great. <clears throat> and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. My heart, my mind. My body, my soul, I give to you, take control. Sacrifice, so Lord, take control, take control, my heart, my mind, my body, my soul. I give to you, take control, I give my body a living sacrifice, so Beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, <clears throat> that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2.
I seem to be getting a little feedback, a little feedback. So sound room, if you can help me with that, we appreciate it so much. Good to see Sister Shumpert here this morning. Yes, uh, well, I was listening in, Sister Shumpert. That's how we listen to one another's conversations on the phone. While Pauline was talking, I was listening in. So yeah, I claimed that call as well. And she did say that she would be here this morning and it's so good to see her able to be out with us physically on this morning. Our theme for this year is there is a God in heaven. Based on Daniel chapter 2 around verse 28. And really our lessons for this whole year is centered around that theme. Now, with me, and I think you all know this, I've said it to the class, I've said it from the pulpit a lot, that uh, sometimes people ask me, what is your theme? What are you going to preach on Sunday? Well, I can give you a subject for Sunday, but I don't always stay with the script. I think you all know that, right? Amen. That ain't a bad thing. I just don't, I, I've never been like that. I've never stayed with the script. But prayerfully, we will give you something to consider that's going to help you as you grow and develop in Christ. This morning, we want to talk about the God of Abraham. For the whole month, we have a, enough stories and accounts of Abraham that we can really stretch four lessons for the remainder of this month on the God of Abraham. God said to Abram at this time, his name would be changed later on, he told him to get out of your country, to get away from your kindred, and get out of your father's house. Sounds like that's a message that should be given to some of our young people this morning. Amen. Get up out of your daddy's house. Stop drinking all of his milk and eating up all his food. Causing the grocery bill to go up. You go to your refrigerator, you know, sleepy during the night, you know, you decide, brother, see what I'm going to get me some milk. You go over, that rascal already went in there and drank all your milk. That, don't, that ain't happening. My, I'm not calling out my children on that. I'm just, I, just know, I just know that sometimes it works like that. Get out from your father's house to a land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. I want you to notice something about Abraham right here as we, as we look at this lesson. The God of Abraham. The God of Abraham. In Genesis chapter 12, he is introduced as Abram. The name Abram means exalted father. That's the name that was given to him by his father, Terah. But God changed his name to Abraham, which means father of a multitude. That's the name that God gave him. Abraham, as father of multitudes, is the ancestor of the Israelites. He's the ancestor of the Ishmaelites. He's the ancestor of the Edomites. Those are the descendants of Abraham, Israel, Israel through his his grandson, uh, Jacob, who was named Israel, and the Edomites, uh, his grandson Esau, who became the father of the Edomites, and his son Ishmael, the son who was not the son of promise, but he was still the father of the Ishmaelites. I want you to notice this, that in every family, Brother Mathis, every family we have some descendants who will come out to be some good folk. Then we may have some family that come out to be bad folk. We don't want to claim, Brother Myers, those bad folk. But sometimes we might get some of them. 
Abraham was the father of some good folks, the Israelites, and he was the father of the Ishmaelites. And even up to this day, the descendants of Abraham are still at war with one another. You have the Jews or those who claim Christianity at war and enmity with the Muslims who are the descendants of Ishmael. I tell you in every family there are some good folk and there are some bad folk. But I want you to notice in this call of Abraham that God told him get out of your country and get out from your kindred and get away from your father's house to a land that I will show you. What God was saying to Abraham was I want you to separate yourself from your kinfolk. Separation is not always a bad thing. Separation is really a biblical principle. Separation is not a bad thing. A lot of times we are asked to separate for our good and not our bad. Sometimes if we stay in situations, we end up uh, uh, just, just getting into all kinds. You know, you have some family members that will just drain you with stuff. Amen. Their problems become your problems. You take on all their problems and then you end up dying and they still go on living with those same. I know some families like that. had a family member to pass and that family member was just so torn up about this, about this grandson and, and, and everything he did. This, this family member was so, so, so uh, concerned for him and, 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 when, and when the family member, when she died, he came to the funeral late. And when he came to the funeral, he came, as they say in the Bahamas, all kapunkle up. Meaning he was drunk like a skunk. <laughs> he, was, he, was, he was drunk like nothing came late. And after, the, didn't even go to the cemetery. And after that, did he change his life? He went on living just like he was living before. So I'm saying to you this morning, church, that separation is not a bad thing. Sometimes separation is a good thing. Now, now watch this. If we go back to Genesis chapter 11, I want you to notice this about Abram's past. In Genesis chapter 11, beginning with verse 27, the Bible says, this is the genealogy of Terah. That's, that's his daddy. Terah begot Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran begot Lot. And Haran died before his father Terah in his native land in Ur of the Chaldeans. Then Abram and Nahor took wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Ishka. But Sarai was barren, she had no child. And Terah took his son Abram and his grandson Lot the son of Haran and his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son Abram's wife, and they went out from them from Ur of the Chaldeans to go to the land of Canaan, and they came to Haran and dwelt there. So the, day, the, the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. Right. I want you to notice this. When, when Terah's son Haran died in Ur of the Chaldeas. He took his family, including Abram, and took them on up to a place where he ended up calling the place Haran after his, after his son. And so they stayed there for a little while. Now, when they got up there, God said, that's enough. That's as far as you're going to go with daddy. That's as far as I want you to go with your kinfolk. 
And so the Lord said to Abram in chapter 12 and verse 1, get out of your country. You already got out of the country, that's one down. Because they left Ur of the Chaldees. Ur of the Chaldees is down there near, uh, uh, what's the name of the sea there? Uh, uh, the Arabian Sea. I think I'm right somewhere down there. Down there around Kuwait. And all that area down there, it was where Ur of the Chaldees was. And they had to travel north. They were on the east side of the Jordan River. And they traveled north after Haran, up, up north, up to the top of the fertile, what is known as the Fertile Crescent. Before he's going to leave and go on over into Palestine. And so God says, get out of your country. That's, that's one down. You came up with dad. And notice this, that after Tira died, the Bible says, so the days of Tira. In chapter 11 and verse 32 were 205 years and Tira died in Haran. Now it's time to move on, Abram. Now the Lord said to Abram, get out of your country from your kindred and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. Separation is not a bad thing. And sometimes we need to separate ourselves from people, from situations, for our betterment, and not for our bad. Now, this separation proved to be a test of separation. It was a, it was a test of Abraham's faith. This separation was a test of Abraham's faith. I want you to get for me, Brother Moore, Acts chapter 7, verses 1 through 4. And then let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and 7 as we think about this faith. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7, uh, but Acts chapter 7 verses 1 through 4, which is the shortened version uh, that Stephen uh, preached to the Israelites, as recorded in Acts chapter 7 verses 1 through 4. Notice this, the Bible says what? Then said the high priest. Then said the high priest. Are these things so? Uh huh. Are these things really so? And he said, Uh huh. Men, uh huh. Brethren, uh huh. And fathers, and fathers, hearken, hearken. The God of glory. That is to listen carefully to what I'm saying. Hearken. Read. The God of glory. The God of glory appeared. He appeared unto our father. Unto our father Abraham. Remember Abraham. His name is Abram, which means exalted father. But God changed his name to Abraham, which means father of a multitude. And so uh, what's going on here <coughs> is that Stephen wants them to recognize that God had some things to say about their father, who is the father of multitudes and the person of Abraham. The God of glory appeared. Unto our father, unto our father Abraham, Abraham when, read, he was in when he Mesopotamia, was in Mesopotamia. Before he dwelt. Before he dwelt. In Sharan. In Sharan, which is another version of saying Haran. Read. And, and said unto him. Uh-huh. Get thee out of thy country. Get thee out of thy country. And from thy kindred. And from thy kindred. And come into the land. And come to a land. Which I shall show thee. Which I shall show thee. Read. Then came now he watch out. watch the test of his faith. He believed in God so much. The Bible says what? Then came he out. He came out. Of the land. Out of the land. Of the Chaldeans. Of the Chaldeans. And he dwelt in Sharan. And he dwelt in Haran. Read. And from thence. And from there. When his father was dead. When his daddy died. He removed him. He removed him. Into this land. Into this land. Wherein ye now wherein dwell. Wherein ye now dwell. That's good right there, brother. Brother Moore. This land which we now do, thousands of years later, the promise that God gave to Abraham because of his obedience, they were the recipients of the promise because this is the land right now where we dwell, is what he was saying to them. Sometimes separation is not a bad thing. And we've got to trust God and not trust man. 
In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7, notice, notice what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. Very, very, very uh, familiar verse, very easy verse. The Bible simply says what? For we what? For we walk by faith. For we walk by faith. Not by sight. And not by sight. We As are, children of God, we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk through the eyes of faith. We can't see physically where we're going, but we believe God so much that he's going to lead us in the way that we should go. Romans chapter 8 and verse number 12. Notice what the Bible says in Romans 8 and verse 12. And verse number 28, excuse me. Romans 8 and verse 28. The Bible says what? We have it up here. And we know not. And we know what? That all things. That all things. Work together. Work together. For good. For good. To them that love to God. To them that love God. To them. Those that love God. Who are, are those who love God. Those who love God are those who have faith in God. And we know that all things work together for good. To them that. Are called. Are called. According to according, his purpose. Go back up. Start, start from you. You want to finish this quick. And we know. And we know. That all things. That all. Not just some things. And we know that all things. Abraham had that much trust in God. That he knew that everything was going to work out. Not just how he wanted. But he knew that all things was going to work out. Just the way that God wanted it to come out. See our problem is we always want things our way. You ever notice people when they get in trouble, they could find God then. When, when we have a national disaster, when we have a national crisis, when we have a crisis in our family, when things are not going so well, we could find God then. But when things are going well, when, when the weather, Brother Seward, is fair weather, we become fair weather with God. We don't even want to call on God because everything seems to be going well. And we know that all things work together for good. To them that love God. To them God. that love God. Read. To them who are called. To them who are called. According to his purpose. According to his purpose. Let me tell you something, Christian. Christian, you have been called for his purpose. We haven't been called for our own purpose. We've been called for his purpose. So don't look at the person sitting next to you. On the right and on the left. He has a different assignment for them. But he has a purpose for you. And you ought to have enough faith in God. To follow the path where he is leading you. Abraham knew that separation was important. He believed God that much. That he was going to walk. And, and, and obey God through the eyes of faith, not knowing where he was going. Now, let me tell you something now. Abraham, Abraham had to explain something to Mrs. Abraham. He had to say something to Sarah. We don't know what he did. And maybe to her it was important. We'll never know it. But to God, God wasn't concerned with that. God was looking at Abraham who was the head of the household? That could go into a whole different subject right there. I ain't going there. But, but, but I want you to notice this in Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1. What the Bible says uh, there concerning Abraham. Uh, well, not just Abraham, but all of the patriarchs. Um, in Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1, the Bible says what? God. God. Who had sundry who times. Who had sundry times. That's at various times. And in diverse manners, in many ways, yeah. spake in times past. Spake in times past unto the fathers. Unto who? Fathers. Unto who? The fathers. Spoke to the fathers. He was the head of the household. He was the patriarch of the family. He was the contemporary. People believe with Job. Remember, Job was the head of his household. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob were fathers. God spoke directly to them, and I want to believe that they had wives. Who knew that these men spoke for God because God, God spoke directly to them and they were willing to follow their, their they were willing to follow, follow their 
husbands. After all, later on, aren't we told that Sarah referred to Abraham as Lord? You all say amen when you can. Ladies, y'all can say amen too. I don't mean nothing by it. She respected his position. He had to go and explain something to her. But he had to say, you know, I, listen, honey, I don't, I don't know. I don't know where God wants me to go, but I know I need to obey God. We've got to have that kind of faith in God. And that's the kind of faith that Abraham had in God. You have anything else in there? No? Okay, let's, let's, let's go on. I want you to notice that, as I said earlier, the principle, the, the principle of separation is taught throughout the whole Bible. Now, there are two types of, 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 of separations. As we think about separation, there's outward separation, and then there's inward separation. There are some people, uh, uh, well, let me say this first. When we think about separation, let's go first to Genesis chapter 2 and verse 24. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 24. The Bible says what? Genesis chapter 2 and verse 24. Therefore, therefore shall, a man shall a man leave his father, leave his father and, his mother, and his mother and shall cleave, and shall cleave unto his wife. Unto his wife. And they shall be and one. They shall be one what? flesh. They will be one flesh. Flesh. Therefore shall a man leave. That's separating himself from his father. God told Abraham to separate yourself from your father's house. Get away from it. In marriage, we ought to separate ourselves from mom and from dad. I know too many situations where, where a, a couple get married and they stay right there in the house. Or he go over to his wife family's house. Mm. He know, that never happened to anybody in here. There, there's problem. God didn't make no mistake when he said, get up out of there. Go and start your own family. Yeah. Now, I, I will say that on occasion... For a few months early in my marriage, well, Pauline and I were marriage, married. Um, I went back to my homestead for a little while, and um, uh, my grandmother, who raised me, she did her best to stay out of our business. <laughs> if I'm lying, Pauline will tell you. She she stayed she she stayed out of it. If anything was going on, she never made on like she heard it. Amen. But the, the, the thing is, is that God says, leave and cleave to your wife. Separation is not always a bad thing, brother. See what is a good thing. It's a positive, it's a positive thing. This principle of separation. Now, there are two, there are two types of separation. There's outward separation. And there's inward separation. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you an example of it when we go to the next passage. I want us to turn to Exodus chapter 6. Exodus chapter 6, verses 1 through 9. Exodus, the chapter is number 6. Let us look at verses 1 through 9. Then the Lord... Now notice this. Then the Lord said unto Moses, said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see uh -huh. what I would do to Pharaoh. Now you're going to see what I'm going to do to Pharaoh. Read. For with a strong hand, for with a strong hand, shall he let them go. Shall he let them go. And with a strong hand, and with a strong hand, shall he drive them out. Shall he drive them out of his land. Out, he's going to drive them out. Read. And God spake unto Moses uh -huh. and said unto him, uh -huh. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. And I appeared unto Abraham, uh -huh. unto Isaac, and unto Jacob uh -huh. by the name of God Almighty. Uh -huh. But by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. Not known to them. Read. And I have also established, I have established my, covenant my covenant with them, with them to give them to the, give land, them of the Canaan. land of Canaan. Read. The land of their pilgrimage. The land of their pilgrimage. Remember when 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 Abraham left Haran and went 
around the Fertile Crescent. He ran down into Canaan land, into Palestine, which was the land of the pilgrimage. And while passing, God says, this is going to be your land. They were strangers there in verse 4. Uh, but in verse 5, the Bible says, And I have also, also heard, heard the, groaning of the, the groanings of the children of, of Israel. Israel uh -huh. And the Egyptians uh -huh. kept them bondage. Kept them in slave. Read. And I have remembered, and I have remembered my covenant. My covenant. Read. Wherefore, Wherefore say unto the I children want you to say to the children of Israel, of Israel I am the Lord. I am the Lord. And I will bring you I out. I will bring you out. Sometimes separation is not just you leaving. Sometimes separation is God getting you out of there. I'll show you what I'm going to do to Pharaoh. I'm, I'm going to get it to the point where he's going to say, leave. Get out of here. That's not always a bad thing either. I am the Lord. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will rescue you from their bondage and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and will and with, excuse me with great judgments I will take you as my people I will be your God then you shall know that I am the Lord your God who brings you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians sometimes notice this sometimes separation is outward but then also there is inward separation. Sometimes people can be separated outwardly, but inwardly they're still enslaved. Israel went out in a strong hand. They saw what God did to the Egyptians. They saw what God did to those nations while they were traveling over there, but their minds were still in Egypt. And so even though they were separated outwardly, inwardly, they were still enslaved. When Moses went on up the mount to receive the commandments of God, which God wrote with his finger, which was written with the finger of God, while he was up there with God, here were the children of Israel below the mountain, Complaining, as for this guy, Moses, we don't know what's going on with him. Well, come on. What about those gods we had yeah. when we were in Egypt? Yeah. Come on. And so, from an inward perspective, they, uh, Aaron told them, bring all the jewels that you can bring. Bring all the jewelry. Yeah. And they crafted for themselves yeah. a calf. Calf worship was Egyptian worship. And so even though God brought them out physically, inwardly, they were still enslaved. Right. Let me give you another example right quick. Remember Lot? When God told Abraham, notice how family is. When God told Abraham, go back to Genesis chapter 12. Notice this. In Genesis chapter 12, God says, get out from your country. Okay, get out from your kindred or your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. Now, drop down, Brother Moore. I don't want you to notice this. Read verses 4 and 5 of Genesis 12. Notice this. So Abraham departed. So, so, so he, he departed. As the Lord has spoken Just to him. Just as the Lord has spoken to him. And Lot went with him. And Lot went with him. And Abram. And Abram. Was 70 and five was years 75 old. 75 years old. When he departed. When out he departed of Haran. from Haran. Okay. Verse 5 says what? And Abram took Sarah. He took his Sarai wife, his wife. And Lot his and brother's Lot, son. And his brother's son. And all their, all their possessions. That they had gathered. That is the possessions between Abraham and Lot. Okay. And the souls. And the that soul they had gotten in Haran. That he had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to and go, into the, to go into the land of Canaan. And into the land of Canaan and they came. The Canaan, they came. Now notice this. Get out of your country. He left her of the Chaldees. Get out from among your kindred. Well, the majority of them, he got out from them. Get out of your father's house. He got out after his daddy, daddy moved. But he took a lot. What's wrong with that, Brother Dawkins, that he took a lot? 
When they got down a little piece, he had a little problem with Lot. Remember the herd men of Lot and the herd men of Abraham? Yes, sir. They got into it. And Abraham says, look, you know, look, you know, no reason for us to fight like this because we be brethren. You, you know, you, you select where you want to go and I'll go in the other direction. He was still being peacemaker, still being accommodative of his nephew by saying, whatever you do, I'll be fine with it. And so Lot looked toward and pitched his tent toward Sodom. And, and, and Abraham chose the, the plains of Mamre, and that's where he went and he lived. Then Lot got down there. Next thing you know, he wasn't, he didn't have his tent, his tent pitched, brother Seward, toward Sodom. He was now in Sodom. Then he got in some problems, and here comes Abraham again and went and had to help his, his nephew out of a, a, a problem when a war took place. During the Battle of the Kings, remember that? When, when, when um, 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 uh, the, the Melchizedek was involved there with bread and wine and all that, I don't have time to go through all of, of that, Genesis chapter 14, but he went and he rescued Lot. Then after that, God determined to, de to, to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because of the great sin that was going on in those two cities. And here was God had to separate Lot from them by pulling him out. I tell you, sometimes in separation, God have to pull us out. Lot had to go with his two daughters because his wife looked back. I tell you, sometimes we can be separated outwardly, but sometimes inwardly we're still enslaved. I want, I want you to notice this. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 17 and 18. We must leave father and mother. We must be willing to be separated like Israel was told that they were going to leave Egypt. We must be willing to be separated outwardly, but we must also be um, 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 uh, 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 prepared to be separated inwardly. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 17 and 18, notice, notice this. The Bible says what? Wherefore, Wherefore, come out. Come out. Ye out. From among them. From among them. And be ye separate. And be ye separate. Said the Lord. Said the Lord. And touch not. And touch not. The unclean thing. The unclean thing. And I will receive you. And I will receive you. God wants us to come out from among the world. And be separated from the world. And a lot of us, we go down in the watery grave of baptism physically. And we are baptized physically. And when we come up out of it, we're not totally out of the world. Because inwardly, we're still enslaved to the world. Come ye out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. But here's what God is willing to do. He tells us to do that, brother Moore, and then he says what? And I will be a father. I will receive you and I will be a father. Unto you. Unto you. And you shall be my son. And you shall be my son. And daughters. And daughters. Says the Lord Almighty. Saith the Lord Almighty. Separation is not a bad thing, y'all. Separation many times is better for us. It works for us rather than against us. I want you to notice this very carefully before I finish this lesson. That the disciples left their nets and followed Jesus Christ. In Mark chapter 1 verses 16 through 20. I want you to notice the attitude of these men who were fishers. And what Jesus had to say to them on this occasion in Mark chapter 1 verses 16 through, through 20 the Bible says now as he walked now as he walked that is Jesus by the sea of Galilee while he walked by the sea of Galilee he saw Simon he saw Simon and Andrew and Andrew his brother his brother casting a net into the sea they were casting their nets into the sea for they were fishers because they were fishers read 
And Jesus said unto them, And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you. Come unto me, and I will make you what? To become fishers become of men. Fishers of men. What Jesus was asking them to do was to separate yourself from fishing. Leave those nets alone and come with me, and I will make you what? Fishers, fishers of men. Oh, man. Now watch what they did. The Bible says what? And straightway. And str you know what the word straightway means? Right away. Somebody says, not right this minute, right this minute. R A T, right this minute. <laughs> right now. Right now. They I, hold on a minute. I, I, I got to tell this one. I had some friends, real good friends of mine. We were friends from, from the cradle until now. I'm, I'm a few months older than them. They're twins, identical twins, Timothy and Anthony. And their mother used to call them sometime, Brother Seward. She would come out on the porch and she said, she called them, Timmy and Tony, come here, not this minute. Come here right now. See, a minute is 60 seconds. That's too long. <laughs> Come right now. The Bible says straightway. Straight. They, they forsook their nets. They just left their nets alone. Read. And followed him. And followed him. Sometimes separation has to be done swiftly, Brother Phillips. Not this minute, but right now. Sometimes we need to be saved from the fire like Lord. Not just get, get, get your belongings. You ain't got time for that. Let's go right now. If your house is on fire, you ain't got time, Brother Gaze, to go back in there and get something. You can, right now. Let's go right now. Now watch this. Let's look at another disciple in Mark chapter 2, verses 13 through 17. Mark chapter 2, verses 13 through 17. The Bible says, and he went forth again uh -huh. by the seaside. He went by the seaside again. And all the multitude uh -huh. resorted unto him. Uh -huh. And he taught them. And he taught them. And as he passed by. And as he passed by. He saw Levi. You notice something? You ever notice this? The multitude was in him, was with him. And he was teaching while he was walking. I know some people who can't chew gum and walk. At the same time. Y'all know anybody like that? Nobody in here like that. <laughs> Sister Hall. But Jesus was teaching while, while walking. And while he was walking, he was just gathering disciples. Come on, come on, follow me. And he's just teaching while he's going. And notice this. The Bible says, uh, uh, what here, in, uh, as we go along, uh, as, he, as he passed by in verse 14, he saw, the, saw, he saw Levi. He saw Levi. That's the Matthew. son of Alphaeus. That's, that's Matthew. Levi, the son of Alphaeus. Read. Sitting at the receipt. He was sitting at the receipt. Of custom. Of custom. And said unto and him. And he said unto him. Follow me. Follow me. You need to separate yourself from what you're doing. Read. And he arose. And he arose. And followed him. Right then. He left it. And followed him. Now I want you to notice something here. In, uh, verses 15 through 17. Now it happened as he was dining in Levi's house that many tax collectors and sinners also sat together with Jesus and his disciples for there were many and they followed him and when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eating with the tax collectors and sinners they said to his disciples how is it that he eats and drinks with tax collectors and with sinners? When Jesus heard it, Brother Carter, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I did not come to call the righteous. Y'all all right. But the sinners to repentance, he wants sinners to separate themselves from sin and come out from among them and be a part of him. Call sinners unto repentance. In Luke chapter 19 and verse 10, we know that the Son of Man has come to seek and to save 
that which was lost. That's why he came. In Luke chapter 15, we notice uh, the story of three different accounts of something or someone that was lost. It was the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. I want you to notice the first part of that, Brother Moore, in Luke chapter 15, verse 1 and following. Notice this. The Bible says what? Then draw near. Then draw near. Unto him all the publicans uh -huh. and sinners for him and for sinners. to hear him. For to hear him read. And the Pharisees uh -huh. and scribes murmured, mm -hmm. saying, mm -hmm. This man received this sinners, man received sinners. And eat it with them. And he eat with them. Read. And he spoke this parable he unto spoke them. This parable unto them, saying, What? What man of you? What man of you? Having a hundred sheep. Having a hundred sheep. If he loses one, he of loses them, one of them, does not leave. Does he leave the ninety and nine? Why they're righteous? They're okay. The ninety and nine, are all right. They're safe. Mm -hmm. Read. And go after that. Doesn't he go after which is lost? The one which is lost until he finds it. Until he finds it. And when he had found it, when he had found it, he laid it he on his shoulders. He it on his shoulders, rejoicing. Rejoicing. Read. And when he cometh and when he home, cometh home, he calleth together, he calls together his, his friends, friends and neighbors, and his neighbors, saying unto them, saying unto them, rejoice, rejoice with me, with me, for I have found, for I my, found sheep, my sheep, which was lost, which was lost. Read. I say unto, I you, say unto you that likewise, that likewise, joy shall be in heaven. Joy, more joy in heaven over one sinner, one sinner that repenteth, that repent. More than over 90 More and than nine, than 99 just persons, just persons who which need, need no repentance. repentance. Let me tell you something. If you are separated from Christ this morning, Jesus Christ is looking for you. If there's one person here this morning who, who, who is separated from Christ, he wants you to separate yourself from the world and become one of his. Because that's why that's why he came. Abraham understood that principle. And as a result of that, as a result of his obedience, the Bible says that Abraham received the promise that God had given to him. If you want to receive the promise of eternal life, you need to separate yourself this morning from the world so that you can be with Jesus Christ. Jesus came to lead us from earth to glory. In John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3, when Jesus was going to separate himself from the disciples, oh, they didn't, they didn't like to hear that. They were saddened by it. But it was really good news. It was good for them that Jesus needed to go away. He told them, you know, I, I need to go away. But in, in John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3, brother, more go ahead and read that. The Bible says, let not your heart Don't let your hearts be troubled. Be troubled. You believe in God. Believe in God. Believe also believe in me. Believe also in me. In my father's in house. In my father's are house. Are many mansions. Are many mansions. Jesus has separated himself from the world to go up there to do what? To prepare a place for us. Read. If it were not so. If it were not so. I would have told you. I would you, have told you. I go to prepare I go a place. To prepare for you. A place for you. And if I go and, and if prepare, I go a and prepare a place for you. For you, I will come again. I will come again and receive you, and receive unto, you unto myself. myself that so where, that I, where am, I am, there you there may be also. He may be also. Amen. Amen. Right. Separation is not a bad thing. Leaving is not a bad thing. Well. Jesus needed to leave so that he can go and prepare a place for us. Now. A couple of the disciples had some questions right there in John chapter 14. Let's just take the time to read it before I sit down. Read on further, brother Moore. And whether I go, he says, where I go, you know. You know. And the way you know. And the way you know. Thomas said unto him, Listen to what Thomas says. Thomas Lord, says, Lord, we know not whither we thou don't goest. Know where you going. And how can we, and how know, can we the way? know the way? Jesus said unto it's him. It's very simple. Jesus said unto him, What? I am the way. I am the way. The truth. The truth. And the life. And the life. No man no come unto the Father. To the Father. But by me. But by me. What Jesus is saying is place your faith in me. Just like Abraham, through the eyes of faith, obeyed what God told him to do. He's asking us through the eyes of faith to obey him. We don't have to know where we going, where he's going. He said he's going to prepare a place for us. We don't know what heaven looks like. 
but I'm looking forward to it. Thomas says, how can, we don't know where you're going. We don't know the way. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except or but by me. Now read on just a little bit more, Brother Moore. If ye had known me, if you had known me, you should have known my you father have also. Known the father also. And from henceforth, and from henceforth, you know him. You know him. And have seen him. And have seen him. Now watch this. Philip said unto him. Now Philip, it was Thomas. Now Philip says what? Lord. Lord. Show us the father. Show us the father. And it sufficeth us. And it will be satisfied if you show us the father. Jesus said unto him. Jesus just said to him previously. That if you've seen the Father, you've seen me. Read. Have I been so long time he with said, you? He said, I've never been so long time with you. And yet has not known me. And yet you don't know me. Philip. Philip. He that has seen me, me has he seen has the seen Father. He seen me has seen the Father. Jesus Christ is the exact representation of the Father. He's gone back with the Father for just a little while to prepare a place for us. So that those of us who have become separated from the world can be separated unto Christ so that when he comes back, we will go to that place that he's gone to prepare. You know, Abraham, next to Jesus Christ, is the one individual that is spoken of more times in the Old and New Testament than any other person. Not only was Abraham the father of many nations, but let him be this morning the father of faith to each one of us. Let him be the father of faith. Let's follow in the footsteps of Abraham. Let's exercise our faith in God just like Abraham exercised his faith in God. So that when Jesus comes back, he'll come back for a people who have separated themselves and are prepared for his for his coming. How many of us are procrastinators? You all ain't gonna hold up your hand. I'll, I'll hold up my hand. We, we put things off. You keep putting, you keep putting stuff off, brother. Brother Kirkland, you know, we, we know what we should do and we still, don't procrastinate when it comes to making your calling an election sure. Today is the day of salvation. If you need to respond to it, we encourage you to respond while the blood is still running warm in your veins. You've heard the word of God. Believe the same. Be willing to repent of your sins. Confess faith in Jesus Christ. Be baptized in water for the remission of your sins. Come out of that water. A new creation in Jesus Christ. Live a life of faithfulness until death. And you'll receive that promise of a crown of life to live with God and with Jesus Christ for an eternity. If you're a Christian, for some reason, you have separated yourself outwardly, but you let Satan get a little hold on you and inwardly you're not totally separated. We could correct that today. We will pray with you so that you can be restored in the relationship and in the position that you ought to have in God. So if there's anyone here subject to the Savior's invitation today, please respond right now while together we stand, while we sing. Yield not to temptation, for hearing the sin is victory. Help you some others to win, fight. Men fully on work, dark passions subdue, and you just love ever to Jesus. I know the heat, and all you have to do is ask the Savior to help you come for strength and I know, I know he is willing to wait. I know that he carry you through. Shine, evil companion.
bad language distant God's name hold rivers not take it in vain be thoughtful and earnest kind hearted and true and you just look ever to Jesus I know that he care and all you have to do is ask to help you come strength and I know I know he is willing to wait I know that he carry you through man amen Thank you, Brother Dawkins, for that outstanding message. Talking about Abraham. And then we need to keep our Lord and Savior in our prayers each and every day. This world is really in a, in a mess. And so we need to keep the Lord with us each and every day as we fight the good fight of faith. We have several responses this morning and then a few announcements. And then we'll have prayer on our way home. Brother Marcus Goodlow has asked for prayers for his mother and his sister. They're not feeling well this morning. So pray for Sister Goodlow and our daughter that they get uh, well soon. It's been announced Sister McQueen is traveling with her granddaughter back to Virginia, I believe. So keep her in your prayers. And their son-in-law, Benny Morris, is in the hospital at this time. So let's pray uh, for Sister McQueen and Brother McQueen's son-in-law and pray for Sister McQueen to have a safe trip uh, to and from Virginia. Pray for Sister Pierce's granddaughter, has been said already. She was hit by a car the other day. So pray for her to get well soon and, and recover from that injury. It's also been said, Brother Jerome Kirkland and his family will be traveling uh, this week, so pray for safe travel as we have several that are already traveling and pray they have uh, safe travel and safe return. Brothers and sisters, please pray for Sister Pratt's uh, son, uh, Gary Pratt. He's, uh, the doctors have given him up at this time. He's, he's not doing very well. And... Uh, Pray for him and the Pratt family. And this is from Sister Fuller. Um, they live down in Florida as well. So uh, pray for that family. Also pray for Sister Fuller as well. She's still not uh, doing well uh, with her uh, procedure. But uh, she's, uh, I went by her house the other day. and She's doing as well as possible. So keep her in your prayers. Sister McQueen's also asked, requesting prayers for her health and test results uh, come back negative. Hopefully, test results come back negative. And our sister Rosetta Chandler will be visiting with her son Carl for a month. I, t I told her, don't, don't move there to Washington, D.C. <laughs> a month is a, is a long time, <laughs> boy. And I, and, but uh, she said, just going for a month. Uh, uh, like I said, she's leaving July 15th and return August 19th. So please pray for her safe travel and visit. And, uh, and uh, she'll be back soon. <laughs> she's also a a asking for... Uh, a second oldest granddaughter has graduated from high school and I pray that she finish her education and put God first. Okay. Let us bow and go to Heavenly Father. Gracious Heavenly Father, again, thank you so much for this day as we have come to be in your presence. We thank the service uh, that was preached this morning by Brother Dawkins to give us the strength that we need to go through this difficult time in, in the world. Let us continue to look to him as our guide and leader as we thank him for all he does each and every day for us to make us better Christians. 
Let us pray for those who have asked for various prayers this morning, traveling grace, those who are going through some health issues, uh, members who are sick and shut in and cannot be with us. Let us pray for them that we continue to look, they continue to hold on to God's unchanging hands and in doing his will and pray they be back with us soon. We thank you so much for all you do for us each and every day. There are times we fall short of your grace and we sin, but we ask for your forgiveness. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, we had the uh, graduation uh, for our graduates uh, a few Sundays ago. We're still looking for donations uh, that can be placed in the contribution envelope. Uh, we started, like I said, on, uh, a few Sundays ago till this Sunday. So. If you have any donations for the graduates, uh, uh, put the um, donations in the collection box, that brown box on either end of the, the building for uh, our graduates. The youth department is also asking for donations on behalf of the youth program. If anyone desires to give to the youth program, also use an envelope to put youth on it and put it in those brown boxes. Uh, to support our youth program. Uh, there will be a youth council meeting right after morning service in the fellowship hall. Okay. The Rose City Church of Christ is having a gospel meeting uh, July 10th. Uh, Brother John W. Iverson Sr. is going to be the guest speaker. And the theme, a, a moment to remember, John 14, 26, uh, Brother Clay uh, Phillips, and the Rose City Church of Christ is given this honor uh, uh, at, this, at that time. The time is 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. Uh, on uh, July 10th. Uh, it's already been said, uh, the 49th Annual Southeast Lectureship, Regional Lectureship, the 9th through the 13th of October. So keep those dates in mind. And uh, again, if you desire to attend, you must do it online. <clears throat> Faulkner University, uh, Faulkner College, is having a, a, a Bible studies. Faulkner University has committed to training and equipping ministers, uh, so with the hope of increasing the number of individ individuals prepared to serve in the kingdom of God. Faulkner will like to make you aware of some of the efforts they have doing at this time. Please check the bulletin board for more information regarding this program. Okay, I think that's all the announcements. One more? That's right. Teachers meeting next Sunday, all teachers, eight o'clock in the fellowship hall next Sunday. No other announcements, uh, responses, please stand as we have Closing song and prayer. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. Our treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can feel at home this world anymore. No, no. You know I have friends like you. If heaven's my home, then Lord, what? You know the angels that come me from heaven's open door. And I, I can't feel at home in this world anymore. 